great voice. I don't really, I have not listened to him. I think the only other time I've heard him was when you played him or maybe you played this before, but um, I did. Yeah, I see why I, people like him. He's got a good, yeah. You know, J-Lo a has a new thing. one that I wanted to play, but it wasn't loading. So I have to wait till next week to play it. That's okay. That was good. Um, good choice. Groovy, groovy. So good morning, everybody. Happy Aloha Wednesday. How's everybody's week going? Good. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Awesome. Mark. Yes. Kayla, thank you for the shout out. Okay. Um, happy to see your faces. And I have a couple of things I want to talk about today. So the first thing is uh, I want to, we did post, well, cancel, I guess, this tequila Thursday. So uh, the fun committee, which was a subcommittee of the culture committee, started Tequila Thursdays last month. It's the live thing. So for those of you, obviously, who aren't on Maui that, I mean, you can do your own. Uh, last month, we, you know, I went. It was great. It was fun. Everybody had a good time. Um, we decided that we probably were going to hold off on this one this month until we can figure out what's going on. And because obviously the restrictions have changed, we also want to be responsible in that regard. And there really aren't venues, you know, we didn't take enough time to look into other, you know, alternative venues. So we'll keep you posted on that. And the other thing that we did is we pared down what we're going to be doing for mega camp. So originally we were going to be in the various offices, have a representative there. So you guys could go in watch your breakout sessions in the office and then stay there to do the zoom golden nuggets mastermind that's happening after mega camp and what we're going to do now is we're just going to do it in the central office so west side i mean you guys can do what you want but obviously we want to be cognizant of an, too many people in the office which i don't think you're going to run into on the west side or the south side unless we actually plan for something um, so there may be people that still go in there and want to watch their stuff. That's totally up to you. Obviously, you, you need to follow the protocol in terms of masks in common areas. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it's like one degree of separation now. Before, it was like not everybody I knew had it or knew somebody who had it. And, you know, I'm literally self-quarantined for the second time this month just in case because... I've literally been home most of this month just to be cautious because I was exposed to somebody who had it. And then I was exposed to somebody who was exposed to somebody who had it. So yeah, I think it's just be a little bit extra careful. It's going around. And um, so we are not going to be adding to that risk by having too many people in each of the offices next week. So if you want to go to Kahului, again, it will be 10 people. They can't be, like, we can't have more than 10. So you have to RSVP with Ray. Let him know if you want to go. And what that schedule is, and Ray, correct me if I get this wrong. I'm just going to look at my calendar. So Monday, the 23rd, which is when Mega Camp starts, we will be watching well, I may not be because I'm home. We'll see if I'll be there. I'm going to take another test just to make sure. But uh, Clash of the Closers is 11.30 a.m. to 12.10 p.m. It's 40 minutes. And that will be playing at the Kahului office uh, on the 23rd on Monday. And then on Tuesday, Mega Camp actually starts at 5 a.m. our time, and Gary is going to be speaking on the early session, which they will record those and make them available later. I don't know how much later, but if you want to catch that information and content as it goes out, then and you want to be there at 5 a.m., you know, get on your Zoom. We're not doing that at the office at 5. So from 5 to 8, uh, there's some stuff going on with Mega Camp, and then they're doing breakouts which this is what we're going to do in the office, Ray, right? Breakouts on Tuesday from 8.20 to 10 a.m. There's two breakout sessions. And so if you want to go into the office, watch your breakout sessions, and we'll be playing one from 8.20 to 10 on Tuesday. And then the Golden Nuggets Mastermind will be from 11 to noon, which we're combining various offices. So Oahu will be on, obviously Big Island of Maui will be on. I don't know if Kauai is jumping on that too. They may or may not. 
So that mastermind is 11 to noon on Tuesday. And then we're also doing the same thing on Wednesday. So mega camp is five to eight. Then the breakouts, 820 to 10. We'll be at the office if you want. Of course, you could just stay at home and watch it yourself. And then a Golden Nuggets mastermind is 11 to noon. That's virtual. You, you register for that regardless. And those of you who aren't attending mega camp, which is not the greatest choice, I will say, although if you're not, uh, and you want to jump on the golden nuggets, or you want to invite guests, other agents, they can also jump on the golden nuggets from 11 to noon, which is basically takeaways that people are going to have from what they saw with their mega camp breakout sessions. So is one, that all clear questions? Yes, one Ray. quick correction. Um, the um, masterminds, the golden nuggets thing, it's going to be with all Hawaii agents. So Big Island, Oahu, Kauai, us, Great. and then that's actually from 10 to 11 each day. So Oops, I'm going to send out a bad. blast today um, that'll have all Amazing. the details. We'll have the Zoom link for the um, 10 to nuggets. 11, not 11 to noon. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Even if you're registered, this is important. So even if you're not going to make a camp, which again, we really wish that you would. It's a great value. Um, even if you're not going, that golden nuggets I would put in my calendar because people are going to be sharing all the exciting news, fun tips, things they learned from Mega Camp. So it's kind of like Mega Camp hors d'oeuvre style, right? So I'll send that blast out. <laughs> Mega Camp light. So, and yeah, and if you are attending Mega Camp, uh, which a lot of you are, go to the Golden Nuggets too, because other people are attending other breakouts. It's always incredibly valuable. So that is what we're really focused on for next week, because that's going to take up time on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then a chunk of Monday as well. And then on Thursday, those of you who have a leadership registration is Mega leadership and that's on thursday i don't know what the agents actually don't have an agent schedule i think you guys are done on wednesday um but i will be getting up early to attend the 5 a.m on thursday for mega leadership because i can't miss that so any questions about that let me look in the chat box okay um next is installation so as you know, we have agents that were going to be installed. So Marion and Sue Deloria and then uh, Keone were all going to be part of the installation, the live installation that some of you were going to attend, were going to attend on September 3rd. They have postponed the live portion of that, which makes sense. And so they are still going to do a virtual installation, which, which I understand that everybody will be able to attend. So you can still go to the live one and watch the installation and all the business side of it and, you know, support your peeps, our peeps that are getting installed. So that will still be, I believe, and Keone, correct me if I'm wrong, is that still on September 3rd? We just don't know what time yet, right? They're going to send out an email. Ram's going to send out an email. Or Marion, you can chime in. Yeah, you know, that's but, correct. Okay. Still on the so, third, just going to be that virtual installation of the officers and pretty much it. Not, okay. And, and, and then the party is currently, it, sorry, I'm interrupting you. Go ahead. Realtor, uh, salesperson, and affiliate of the year will be at the November 5th party. Party. Yeah. So the party, the celebration, and the awards were postponed to November 5th. So put that day in your calendar. That's when they're planning on postponing it to. Obviously, we'll have to see how things are going at that point. Um, okay, and then I wanted to update on the moratorium and find out if anybody has any additional information. My understanding, so when I had talked about the training that, that HAR was offering regarding the moratorium and all that, Mary and I was talking about, I realized it actually had already happened. They already did that session, and I understood that I guess they said it was going to be available because it had passed. I went back and I looked at the email. They had already had it. Now, um, one, I believe that's made available to members. Two, though, is since then, I've read several articles that have stated that the moratorium is extended at this point through October 3rd. Is that what you guys understand? So, it, so we're not... So it's kind of like there's an extension going on anyway. So not that we don't have to worry about it, but it's not in effect anyway. Now they've extended Yes, great. Yes, okay. they did. We're all on the same page. Yeah, and Thank I think you. it's worth mentioning that if we know anybody, there is money available. So we need to encourage people, <clears throat> whether it's landlords or tenants, 
to go get some of that money that is sitting there waiting for people to access it. So is there, I, I remember <clears throat> that from, are, you're talking about, are you, well, so owners you're talking about, rental assistance programs I know about, what are the ones that are available for owners and, or can we remind them of what the websites are, which I don't have in front of me. Okay, um, so I'd have, I'll have to put that together okay. and get that to you. Okay, so we'll remind you guys, or if you need that, I guess, talk to your broker and we can figure out how to get that to you. But there are, yeah, there's help available. I remember when we had the, when they started the rental assistance programs and we were just sharing everybody, which sharing with everybody, which they already were doing, I think through, and was it through MEO's office that they have a program? I think, I, at least for Maui, I think Maui Economic. I think if you Google Maui rental assistance, you'll right. get plenty of choices. Thank you. Yeah. And there is a church, uh, one of the church programs in Wailuku, I think, has that too. Okay. Um, I have a note. So, Nick Baldwin, I told you that I look up stuff on Facebook periodically as far as like people posting real estate related things. And Nick Baldwin, who knows who Nick Baldwin is? Does anybody follow Nick Baldwin on Facebook, social media? Anybody know who Nick Baldwin Lab is? Lab Coat Ages? Yeah. So he is, if you're in, thank you, Michelle. If you are a member, who's a member of Lab Code Agents on Facebook? It's a huge, it's one of the, I think it is the largest real estate community group that exists. So if you're a member of Lab Code Agents, Nick Baldwin, thank you, thumbs up guys, is one of the founders of Lab Code Agents, him and Tristan Amuda, uh, um, I don't know how to say his name, something like Amuda. Um, they are the founders of Lab Code Agents and they actually do their own events. Uh, they also are Keller Williams agents, which is awesome. And they, um, and then Nick Baldwin is now a tech, uh, what do you call it? A regional tech trainer for one of the regions. So he's, he was a individual agent killing it in his area, which I don't know, maybe is Michigan or something. I can't remember. And then he became a team leader and then he became a uh, regional tech trainer because he had such success running his business at a high level using technology and all the, he was like the forefront guy with our Facebook ads and having great success and testing everything out that a lot of people copied what he was doing. And so he posted and he, he loves to promote how well the Facebook partnership works with KW, as long as you have the follow-up systems in place. And a lot of people complain or say that the leads are crappy because whatever, you have to have so many of them to get a deal. And part of it is just the follow-up system isn't in place. So what he wrote was Facebook lead, and this was like a week ago, maybe. So it was like a week from when the lead came in. Facebook lead comes in August 1st, 15 contact attempts, six phone calls, eight texts, one email. Now, how many of you would go through 15 contact attempts? Me. A okay, good, Michelle. And then he wrote appointment set for tomorrow at 1.30. So he, it took 15 contact attempts and now he has an appointment. Um, and he said, are you following up like that? If not, then the quote leads suck. And if you are, then they are great, right? So it's perspective. We say there's no bad leads. There's only bad kind of systems in place to follow up or people who don't want to do that. Now, I'm not saying you may want to or have the time to do 15 follow-ups with every Facebook lead that comes in or every online lead that comes in. However, somebody has the time to do that for you, or you create a system, right? Command that will do a, some of that for you automatically, which is our automatically. That's Zach Younger's word. I love that word. And, um, and so that part is automated, which is what Nick does. And then, you know, he also does the additional text. Uh, he might have somebody that does it for him at this point. But you can have, that's something like a VA can do, right? They can do your text program. They can feel the leads that come in and then that way, and then set an appointment when that person finally responds. Now, why do you think that it is that it takes 15 attempts or 10 or whatever that number is, right? Ben Kenny does 10 days of pain. He's doing 15 touches in this case. Why do you think it takes eight to 15 touches on average for somebody for, you know, to, to get a contact or a response to turn a lead into a contact. What would be some of the reasons? People are busy. People are Emily, busy. that is the number one reason. People think, oh, they don't want to hear from me. I'm annoying them. Except that Emily is correct. When you go through this process and you do connect with somebody, 
the number one reason is because they were busy. They, they're not realtors. This isn't what they do every day. They have a life. They have jobs. They they were online and they filled out your form because they were looking at property at you know midnight or on the weekend. Um, and and so what happens is they get busy and it takes that amount of time typically. And they will often say, "Thank you so much for following up," or "I'm really glad. Thank you for you know not giving up on me or calling me." Yes, I'm interested. I've been very busy. I'd like to talk, you know, and then they'll set the appointment. However, what happens if you don't do those follow ups, they will only then they will what happens is you don't contact them or you do a couple times and they're busy. The following week, they're looking at property again online. And now they contact an agent, another agent directly that gets back to them right away. And now they're working with that person. Now, that is not to say people aren't going to be like, don't call me. I was just filling it out. Like, I just wanted to see the information. You're horrible. Like, whatever. I, yes, of course that happens too. Um, that, however, you're not looking for that person. You're looking for the person that says, thank you so much. Yes, I'm interested, which is one in, I mean, if you're talking about Facebook leads for us in Hawaii, which is, you know, Nick Baldwin granted is in a um, more saturated market in terms of the number of units that they do. So those conversion rates are actually better because we tracked ours. However, ours happen. It just takes possibly up to twice as many for us because we're a second home resort market. So other second home resort markets are in the same boat. So say Nick gets one out of every 50 people that he talks to or one out of 80 or 100, it might take 200 leads for you to get somebody that's going to then buy or sell. Now, if those 200 leads and Facebook ads cost you $200, is it worth going through that to get one sale? Is it worth spending $200 to close one transaction here at our price points, right? All day. So again, just a reminder, this is to remind everybody, this is a tool that we have that other companies, it's an advantage. Other companies don't have it, meaning they can go and do their own ads on Facebook and pay 30 bucks a lead. We can do it as low as a dollar a lead. And so we get more bang for our buck. We can get more leads at funnel in and we have a follow-up system in place that will help. Now you still have to do the rest of the work or you have to hire the person that's going to do that work for you. If you don't want to talk to those people, I know some of you have done it, you've given up. So I'm just reminding you not to give up because I saw this post and went, yeah, like this, this really probably should be part of what you're doing along with everything else. How many of you, is there anybody on this call, just curious, that is doing this consistently and have, you know, have a follow-up program in place or have had a conversion from a Facebook lead? Baron, yes, I see your hand. Are you asking a question or are you? Um, well, I, it's kind of both. So okay. Um, I ran a Facebook ad for, I, I didn't know what I was doing. So I ended up running the same ad two different ways with different amounts of money. But anyway, I didn't run it through Keller Williams and I probably spent like 150 bucks and I had like 5,000 people that saw my ad. I had like three, I can't remember like 2,500 or 3,000, um, you know, like where they actually interact a little bit more or just, I can't that remember click, the technology. On it. So there's like impressions and then you've got people that, that click on it and then people that maybe fill out your form. Yeah. And then I got seven people that filled out the form with email and phone number. And I've talked to a couple, like a few of them already. Um, and it didn't really take me that many times to to get in touch with them. Some of them, you know, haven't responded. That's fine. Um, but I mean, this is a huge tool that people should be definitely utilizing. My question is, um, and maybe I should be doing it through Keller Williams. What is the advantage or what is the difference? I know you, maybe you said that you, your dollar would go further or something or how, how yeah. is it different? How is it different using it through Keller Williams command versus doing it on your own? Can you just That's tell a me great, a little bit about yes, that? Yes, I will tell you. Um, unless Latasha wants to tell you, I don't know. Do you want to talk about that, Latasha, or you want me to? 
you can go ahead, but I can definitely, okay. I was going to jump in, but yeah, chime in. Okay. Cause Latasha deals with this all the time. What I can tell you as far as the advantages are Facebook, it has a partnership with Keller Williams. What that means is Facebook actually created. So the algorithms that they create that you utilize and you were trying to figure out yourself, what's the best way to do it. They've already created that for us and command. So it's automatically going to use the highest level algorithms for the best, you know, the most advantageous exposure. They've done it for us. They've programmed it for Keller Williams so that when you do an ad and command, you don't have to, you, you don't have to do as much to try to make it a variable of whether you're going to get the exposure you want, whether it's going to produce results, whether you're going to get, uh, you know, they have the, the lead capture page already in there built in that you can use. They advise what kind of content they have templates. I mean, so that's one. The other is because of that, as a result, the cost per lead is so much lower than what everybody else is doing to try to do on their own and what you did. So you may not have had to spend uh, $150 to get the same result. You might have only had to spend $30, for example, or whatever the amount is. I mean, if it's 30 bucks a lead normally, so, so we can do that. So you got 10 people that, or seven people that filled out the form at 150 bucks, what is that? $21 per person, I right? Got one appointment. Actually, yeah, I mean, I, I felt like I had really, really good results. That's actually, that's pretty good. I mean, although I, you, you don't need to spend that much, I, I would guess, because that, most of our agents are spending, if you're using it in command, you know, we're talking about a campaign of 20 bucks or 30 bucks or maybe 50 bucks. So you might have spent three times the amount that you needed to. So that way you can do more and then just convert at a higher rate. So those and would be so, the two. Okay. Yeah. Who tested yeah. these out? So there are agents, Keller Williams agents that did it the regular way and then did it through command and they tested the algorithms. And then these are statistics over time and basically yes. they're saying it's better results or something. So we actually used to all do before our partnership with Facebook, we all did it independently. And we knew what those, we knew what those results were based on what we were spending, which I mentioned 30 bucks, say, or so a lead, uh, you know, to convert, I mean, into a contact say, and then in this case, it, so then what happened is Facebook literally created these like the Keller Williams partnered with Facebook. They worked on this together. This was exclusive to us. Facebook was at our, you know, family reunion two years ago or three years ago when this started, I want to say a couple of years ago. And, um, and yeah, they were all doing it and testing it and, and agents were beta testing it before they released it to everybody. But yes, it's absolutely proven statistics and Facebook and KW talked about it at the conference. That's how I got the information about the data originally. Latasha, you want to add to that? No, um, the only other thing that I would say um, is this, coupled with the algorithm that Facebook actually created for us, which is absolutely huge and unheard of in any industry, let alone real estate. And then number two, if you're utilizing it at command and then you have those backend systems to automate your touches, it's gonna save you time and money to have a system in place, i.e. a smart plan, follow-up, to make sure that you are getting those touches into the client's consistency, but you're just doing it at a click of a button and you're not doing anything else. So it's kind of like the infomercial set and forget it. You're setting it up, forgetting it, and it's just automatically touching them. So um, that's a huge component. Um, that's a great point, Latasha. Yeah, it automatically goes into your, it automatically goes into your command and then you can have the smart plan set up automatically as well for anything that's a Facebook lead that gets tagged that way. And then um, there was one other thing you mentioned, Latasha, which was, yeah, on the, oh, on the algorithm. So the other thing is, this is what Facebook loves about working with Keller Williams, because we have so many agents uh, that, that do this and are utilizing it. They're able to get data back very quickly about what our results are, and they make changes in our ecosystem too. So they love, they've said that they do that. So they can change things and you don't even know it's being changed for the better because of the data they're consistently getting with the thousands of agents that are using this. So they have a controlled pool of people they can test their own data with. And so there's a, it's a two-way conversation with them. Um, just so, one, yes. one more question. What is yep. the best way to dive a little bit deeper into this? So I'm making sure that I'm utilizing this at a high level, to, you know, based on 
training and, and how can I make sure I'm utilizing this? You know, I love that question, Baron. Uh, Latasha's waving her hand. If you can't see her, she'll <laughs> okay. do uh she'll do a one-on-one with you and take you through it. Like she'll just show you how to do it. She'll go oh, with, okay. hand with you and okay, set cool. it. I help make sure it's set up. And once you do it, you'll be like, Oh, it's super easy. Um, and that's awesome. So great job and great job, Baron, for your follow-up too, to be able to get those to convert. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Um, okay. So next thing is transaction coordinators and transactions, as, transaction assistants. Some of you have been asking me about that. So I'm going to give you an update. We have been, it took a bit longer than we expected for the transaction coordinator and transaction assistants uh, to get trained. So where we're at today is they are ready to go and they've already started taking some files and thank you to the agents who have been working with them a little bit as they've been kind of testing it out. Um, we wanted to make sure that they were ready to provide a high level of service. And so, and we've actually ended up with, with several transaction coordinators now that are, that are great. So we're really excited. So we have and we're going to send you guys, so we're putting together, I will send an email out with instructions on how to get them involved in your transaction. And then we'll also have a contact sheet for all the different uh, options that you have. So you're going to have, um, you actually will have access to four, five, five transaction coordinators, OMG, from zero to five. Look at that. And then, so the transaction coordinators, if you already have one and you love your person, great, whatever, keep using them. If you need one or want to switch or whatever, you feel like you, you need that support when you get this information, it will have instructions on how to reach out to them. And then the transaction, so that'll be your transaction coordinator. You would treat them like any other coordinator, meaning you're going to email them when you have a deal and they're going to jump in and they're going to help you and do your timelines and everything you need, right? And all your document uploads. The transaction assistant is also an optional service for you. Um, we were originally going to have them look at every single file of everything. And then we realized, well, if the agent already has a TC or they're doing it themselves and they're doing a great job and they don't need that support, then they don't, you don't need it. If you want it, what that person will do, the transaction assistant, same thing, you would send them an email at the time that you have a, a transaction they will oversee if you copy them on everything the activity in what you in your file the, and then you send them the documents they'll actually upload them for you they won't do other transaction management or coordinator services this is the transaction assistant but they will upload your documents for you so if you're doing your own files and you're not using a tc cuz you're not busy enough or whatever or you know you're not there yet but you have a file and you want somebody to upload the paperwork for you into your command, you can send them your paperwork and they will do that. And that is free. That is free to you. So the transaction assistant costs you nothing. That's somebody that will upload your paperwork and um, that's all they'll do though. So you have to send them your documents and they'll upload them and make sure that your file is complete. It's your job to still they'll do everything else and make sure everything gets done. And they're going to, so if something's not complete, you need to send it to the client for signature. They're not going to do that. The transaction coordinators will do all of that for you, right? They're going to be more full service. And that is probably $495, I think, is the cost. So you guys pay that now, $495 or $500, probably with whoever you're using. So it's just to give you some options. And so we don't get in a situation again where a lot of you guys, you know, have been left in the lurch from, from TCs that either left or that you um, didn't want to work with and wanted to find another alternative. You know, those guys are all independent contractors and so are you. So that's your prerogative who you want to work with. Although I saw what happened and was like, we have to step in and have an option for you. So we did that. Um, like, so they're re ready to go. Yes, Kayla. Oh, um, yeah, that sounds really awesome. Thank you for having that, um, those, those two options. And I was curious for the um, transaction assistance, when you say they're going to make sure that the forms are complete, that all, uh, just to be clear, um, that means like making sure that everybody's signature is on there, or if there's like an MLS number missing from another agent or something like that, that they'd be able to share what else needs to be on the, in the form in case we may have missed it. Man, that is a good question. Um, 
I'm going to say I'm not 100% sure yet how far the transaction assistant is going to go in supporting that as opposed to a transaction coordinator. I, so far, we've said to them, when the documents get sent to you, you upload them. Um, yes, they know how to check to make sure things are, they're learning all the documents and know how to check to make sure things are completed. I would guess they're still going to do that and to prepare them for compliance. Because the idea is that it's easier when it goes through compliance and you have stuff complete. So yet I'm going to say, mo I'm going to say I'm 90% sure, Kayla, that they will look at the documents when they upload them and, and check signatures. That's about all they're going to do though. Like they're not going to go any deeper than that. So if you want somebody to go any deeper than that, you, you're going to want to hire a transaction coordinator. But I, I'm just going to say, yes, I'm pretty sure. And if not, I'll let you know, because the only other option would be they're just going to upload whatever you send them. But that doesn't make sense because I'm hiring them so that they make it easier for it when it goes to compliance, that stuff is there. So uh, I haven't been too much in touch with that person. I've been more focused on the coordinators because they're doing so much more work and I want to make sure they're really um, trained. However, I will double check and I'm going to tell you that 90% sure they will check signatures if that's the question and that's about it and upload. Okay. That's pretty amazing. Awesome. Yay. All right. Uh, that, let me see. Okay. And then the last thing is I, uh, Latasha would like to talk a little bit more about smart plans. So uh, take it away, Latasha. You're amazing. Markets enter tech trade. Thanks. So I'm actually going to defer my time to um, my BFF on Hilo if she's on the call, Rochelle. But what I do want to say is we do have a session next week and the only session is during the breakout time of Mega Camp. And we actually highlighted a 30 minute segment only. And it's going to be specifically about smart plans. And it's going to be a testimonial. Uh, Brandon Alcesto from Hilo is going to come and share with you how we were able to work through some of the inconsistencies in his um, business operations. And I guided him in terms of creating the SMART plan. And he's gonna talk about that process and the results, which is huge. And I'm gonna defer to Rochelle and she's gonna also share a testimonial and believe it or not, it coincides with the whole Facebook campaign, pay that. So Rochelle. Awesome. And then Rochelle, are you going to talk about Brendan? Because I want to elaborate on Brendan a little bit so people <laughs> understand what kind of results he's having as a brand, sure. as a new, new agent. So talk about what he's, he's yeah, done Yeah, absolutely. But... I'll, I'll start there first. He okay. is, um, he may be on the call, but he got licensed in January and um, full-time, you know, with the intent to be a full-time agent, immersed himself in Ignite. And uh, we did weekly one-on-ones. Uh, when he made his six-month mark with Keller Williams, he also closed his sixth transaction. And he is, um, ha has been regular with farming, has been practicing his scripts, and really, really took to the systems and models that Keller Williams has to offer. And he's doing so phenomenal. So from zero, no, being a brand new agent in January to one closing a month. Like that Absolutely, is- yep. Insane. Yep. New to the like industry. Awesome. Amazing. Yep. Brendan, you're yep. awesome. Okay. Yep. And a lot of what uh, a lot, I'd love to say that a lot of his um, transactions have been his calls, his fear, his lead generation, very little referrals paid out. So he's doing Fantastic. phenomenal. Very proud of him. Yeah. All right. Um, for, for very quickly, I wanted to just kind of say that uh, we had our team had a, a listing that we were promoting. And I did it by way of a, the Facebook command um, where I promoted the lead and I added, there's a way, Latasha can actually assist in the logistics side of it, but I actually added a smart plan to my Facebook, Facebook campaign um, with the help of Zach Younger and John Morris because it was the easy button. And the easy button allowed the campaign to take a lead and it all, it, implemented text, call, and email um, into my system. So when the leads came in and they were interested in not just this property, but property in general, uh, they were able to get um, text messages from what, what would have been from me, but it was already set up, meaning I didn't have to do it myself. 
they've already been touched several times. You know, I spent maybe 25 bucks per. So Facebook, 25, Instagram, 25. I got four leads in a week, one of which is somebody that was looking for a million dollar property in Maui that um, I have already referred to another one of my Maui colleagues. And so I love what it did. It was a, like you said, Lise, set it and forget it. They're getting text messages. And because I also participate with Twilio, they're responding to me via Twilio text and I'm able to get them um, property lists and go into their nurturing for the property leads because it's this property is not working for them, but other properties are on the big end. Fantastic. Yeah. Such a great um, testimonial and information. Great job. Lisa, um, can I share one more thing? Yes. Also for the set, the easy button that Rochelle referred to, I created a video, Loom video that I posted on Facebook, our private Facebook page, and it's a how-to. So if you want to add that, I um, provided a video instructions on how to do it from Tuesday, and I will re, I'll email it out again on Thursday as well. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, I had a question about, well, number one, I wanted to mention Jonathan Udis, who put in the chat box um, that he is doing. So he's the chair of our culture committee, which by the way, if you want to be part of the culture committee, talk to Jonathan Udis, who's like totally awesome. Um, and is on the agent leadership council. So that's a beach cleanup. You guys that are scheduling, right, Jonathan, and they can, if they want to participate. So that's outdoor. So that's COVID friendly and, um, social distance friendly. When is that going to be Jonathan? Um, we're, we just, just based on what's been going on, we're setting the date right now. It is probably going to be late September. Um, okay. and I'll, I'll make an announcement, but just because, um, you know, some people weren't at the last uh, committee meeting, I just wanted to put it out there. Thank you for pointing it out. Um, yeah, like you said, it's going to be social distanced, uh, and, uh, the plan for us is that we're going to meet and for an hour, we're going to do a beach cleanup. And then afterwards, um, hang out and uh, socialize and, and be together at the beach. So uh, we'd love to see people contributing and participating. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Fun. Thank you, Jonathan, for putting that together. And then I will mention, because this is kind of exciting, um, and we haven't, the Big Island, we'll talk about that today in our um, executive and leadership team meeting about holiday party events. Uh, because normally that's kind of planned by now where we know what we're doing. And obviously there's a lot of unknowns in terms of what's going to happen. However, we are still moving forward with some planning. And so I can tell you on Maui, um, it was re requested by, by some agents to make the date to do it after the holidays, uh, to not compete with a lot of what was going on. And so that also awards could be given for the year. And so we set a date, this is for Maui, um, of January, what is it, Ray? Fort, let me look. January 14th, right? That's a Friday, January 14th. Is that the date you have? So we're looking at doing a holiday party that day. I don't know, I guess save the date. We haven't sent anything out yet because we're still coordinating the, the details of it. But just a heads up, we are talking about that now. And we're going to be talk about, talking about what we want to do uh, on the Big Island as well. And um, obviously, we'll have to go with the flow uh, if something changes. And although we're still going to plan to do it because we want to do it if we can do it. Hey, Lisa. Um, it's going to be a total blast. So wear your yes. masks, social distance. I want this party to happen. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Uh, um, Jonathan, yes. Yeah, I wanted to just make one other announcement, although it's like nothing official yet, but I've been working on a campaign called KW Cares I Care, uh, and I would love to have the support. I would love it if our brokerage could like lead the international KW um, in it. It's basically a commitment to just give any, it can be as small as you want, but to give a small donation to KW Cares from each of your uh, commissions. And so... Uh, I'm just excited. I'm hoping that the announcement and sort of video for it might be at Mega Camp. Um, I'm going to share it with Lisa soon, but it's connected to the goal of the culture committee, which is just to strengthen and make the KW culture inspiring and to just be compassionate and giving with our success. Um, so just wanted to let you guys know that's coming up. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. 
Okay, two last things and I'll let you guys go. One is I did yeah, get a question. I, yes, Marion? I just wanted to say that Brian Schatz's site has all the information about what tenants can do to apply for help and what landlords can do. So great. I posted it in the chat. It's great. Um, awesome, it's really thank you. Helpful. Thank you, Marion. Um, Okay, I had a question about the transaction assistance. So I just want to, Jonathan is on fire. I just want to clarify about, so your transaction coordinator, it makes sense why that that's leverage for you. Transaction assistant, the question was, how does that save time if that person's uploading and you would be uploading anyway? So there's two things, two responses to that. One is it does save time if you copy, if you just send them all the documents, they go in, to your command and they look for the corresponding correct place. I mean, I would say, yes, it saves you some time. The main reason we, we hired them though, was because even when an agent had a transaction coordinator, when they did or they didn't, there were still documents missing on the day of closing. When for, And we wanna pay you the day of closing. So we want your file to be complete. We don't want to have to keep your check and it's an administrative burden for us. We'd rather pay you that day and we want you to get paid that day because we know it's really important to you. So when I saw that there were still documents missing and people were upset they weren't getting paid, I said, okay, well, obviously that's your responsibility to upload your documents because you have to have a complete file for liability for obvious reasons. But I said, if we had somebody that was overseeing that and making sure these documents were getting uploaded that we paid for, so that when it went to compliance, it was already there, that would minimize us not being able to pay you at closing, if that makes sense. Now, most of you are great. Honestly, it's a very small percentage of people that that happens to, but it happened enough times that I said, we need to help prevent it. So even when people had a TC, they were still missing stuff which is, I mean, if you have a TC, unless it's your fault, you know, of course, if the TC is telling you five times, you have to go get something signed and you don't go get it signed, that's your fault. Um, but anyway, so hopefully that clarifies that. And then um, lastly, Andy Bemrose, are you on the call? Uh, it is Andy's birthday today. Woo -woo. And usually she sings a birthday song for everybody. And I don't know your birthday song, Andy. So we're just going to sing a traditional happy birthday for you as we go out. Okay, so ready? Here we go, everybody. And unmute. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 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 Yay, Happy Andy. birthday. Enjoy your day. I don't even know why you're here. No, I'm just kidding. I'll see you at the next meeting. All right, you guys. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. And have a great rest of your week. And you're great. Love you. Bye. Woohoo. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, Lisa.